This is the GLI Net Slate 7, an awesome little travel router that I've actually done a video on, but what's different this time around is that we've taken this guy and turned it into a full-fledged server complete with network storage, Docker, and we're even running Plex. And the best part about all of this is that it's all natively supported stuff, no crazy hacking or flashing of custom firmware required. And yes, this device is running a pretty low power ARM chip, so you'll have to temper your expectations here, but I think you'll still be surprised. Let's check it out. Under the hood of these GLINet routers is OpenWRT, a Linux-based operating system that is designed specifically for networking, but that doesn't mean we're just limited to networking. Hell, right there in the UI, they even have a dedicated spot for network-attached storage. It's really that easy to set up this thing as a NAS. And there are some caveats though. There's obviously no SATA or NVMe ports on this device, so you'll be using the USB 3 port for storage. This could be a hard drive, SATA SSD, external NVMe drive, whatever. As long as it connects via USB, you're good. I would also recommend formatting the drive before you plug it in as there isn't really an easy way to do that in the OpenWRT UI. Also, if you plan to use this storage with Docker later on, you'll definitely want to format it using ext4 as I ran into issues when trying to use NTFS or XFAT. If you just want the network storage feature, then this really doesn't matter. I used this little 128 gigabyte external SSD for this, and for some reason in the UI, it thought it was a one terabyte drive or something, I don't know, probably a bug. But your first instinct when you want to get this working as a NAS is to turn on Samba and then set up your shared folder. But hold your horses there, buckaroo. We're actually going to SSH into the device first and set up a dedicated folder that we'll be using for the network share. Once you're in, you should be able to see your drive mounted to the location TMP, mount D, and why GLINet chose this location, I don't know, but that's where your drive will be. You can see my disk one part one partition here. So when we go in there, we are going to make a new folder called share. Now, when we go back into the web UI and create our shared folder, we specifically select that folder we just created. But why did we do this? Well, if we plan on using this drive for other things like Docker, then we want that to have its own folder too. And by default, when we create a share in the UI, it'll create it at the root directory, which when paired with Samba can cause some funky permissions issues. So I just recommend doing it this way. Now the shared setup isn't anything fancy. We just give it a name and assign either read or read write permissions to a user, which you'll want to create if you haven't done that already. And honestly, that's it. We can now connect to our network share from any device on the network, effectively turning our GLI net router into a NAS. And this one has a 2.5 gig port, so theoretically you could get some pretty decent speeds over a wired connection. Now let's move on to something a bit more nerdy. Let's set up Docker. In the OpenWRT UI, you'll see a section for add-ons, which is basically just the package manager. Go ahead and search for Docker and install both the Docker and Docker D packages. This is the Docker tools and the Docker daemon respectively. This will take a minute or two, but once that's done, you should just have Docker running. You can test this in the CLI by just typing Docker or Docker PS. Wow, Brett, that's it? Kind of, but there is an important step we need to take. You see, there isn't a ton of storage built into the router, so we'll want to make use of the external storage we added. In the same way that we created that share folder, we are going to create a Docker one as well. Now we just need to tell the Docker daemon to use this location for all the Docker data. You can do this by editing the config file in etc slash config and updating the Docker D file. Then just change the data attribute to the location of your created folder. After Googling how to save and exit Vim, you'll then need to restart the Docker service. One way to do this is by going into the Lucy UI, which from my understanding is a native OpenWRT UI for more admin type stuff. Anyway, this is hosted on port 8080, so you'll want to go in there and under startup for some reason, you'll find a list of all the running services where you can just find Docker and click restart. Now, if you check what's in the Docker folder you created, you should see the default folder structure for Docker. Neat. At this point, you're free to just use it how you normally would, which for me involves installing Portainer. I will note here that I had some trouble getting containers to work on any network that wasn't the host one. Not sure why, someone smarter than me can probably figure that out, but I just use the host network for everything, meaning that there's no port forwarding, the containers will just use the host ports. This required me to add the net equals host parameter to my Docker command, but that's it. You could also remove the port forwarding if you want. Then navigating to the Portainer UI port has us ready to go. We really are just set to use this as a normal Docker setup. The host port thing does cause some issues when spinning up containers that use the same ports. 
For example, when I created an Nginx container, which natively uses port 80, it didn't work since the OpenWRT UI also uses port 80. To get around this, I just changed the port on the OpenWRT UI to use 81, which cleared this right up. But you will run into issues if you plan on spinning up lots of containers on here that use the same ports, but let's be honest, I don't think you're realistically spinning up a bunch of containers on here. And you're surely not spinning up Plex, right? Right? So to get Plex up and running, honestly, it's really easy if you've got Portainer since it has a nice little template creator which lets you drop in a Docker Compose file. The default Compose file for Plex is enough to get you going and the only change you'll have to make is adding the volume mapping to wherever your media is. I went ahead and created a folder in my shared folder which made it super easy to transfer over my legally obtained media from my main server to this one. And just like that, Plex is up and running. Navigating to the UI on port 32400 will begin the setup process. I did notice that this could take a few minutes even after the container is running, but just give it a refresh or two and you'll be in. Then just go through a setup process like normal. Add your media library using the volume you mapped, and you got yourself a media server running on your tiny little ARM-based OpenWRT router. If you're streaming media without having to do any transcoding, it actually works great. You wouldn't even know this is being streamed from a travel router. Checking on the CPU usage and temps showed us that this really isn't a problem at all for this guy. I also learned that you can control the fan in the UI and set a fan curve if you want. And I mean, there you go. You just turned your GLINet travel router into a whole ass server. And do I recommend this? I mean, not if you don't need to. Like don't sell your main server and move everything to one of these just because you can, but for a simple NAS and a way to run a couple of containers you need deployed in a travel setup, this is great and prevents you from needing another piece of hardware and also keeping your power usage down. What do you think? Anyway, that's all I have for this one. If you liked it, then drop a like and subscribe if you want to see more moderately useful home lab content. I want to give a huge shout out to my YouTube members and my Patreons. You guys are my travel plex docker mass with all the bells and whistles. Y'all are great. And if you're still watching, you're Podman. Thank you so much. And I'll see you in the next one.